In the previous video, I showed you how to add the Code Flood custom end unit test runner to your Cycle solution so you could add unit testing to your project. In this video, we're going to continue where we left off and we can actually start writing some unit tests. So here's the test runner at the moment, nothing exciting to see in there. And just as a reminder, this is the method that we're going to be testing. Okay, so this method is supposed to be returning all children of the current context item that have been ticked as being featured. This is going to be working against the data model, as you can see over here inside Sitecore. So we've got a data template here with a featured field, which is a type checkbox. And to test this method, I'm going to have a test um, content tree, such as we can see here. So I'm going to have my sample root here. And underneath that, I'm going to have some children. And some of them will have feature ticked. And some of them will have feature not ticked. So we're not expecting all the children to be returned, we're expecting only some of them to be returned. So coming back over here to this method, we can see immediately in here we actually have a bug because at the moment we're just returning all of the children. So this is what our test is actually going to be testing for. So let's add our first unit test in the test runner project. I'm going to add a new class. And I like to call my name my classes, my test classes, after the actual classes being tested. So I have the item util class. I'll call this tests so I can dif differentiate it. Okay, and because I'm actually going to be testing against the code that I have in the util project, I'll need to add a reference to that project as well. Okay. Now just some plumbing so any unit will pick this up. I need to tell any unit this is a test fixture. Okay, and then in here we can add a test. And we'll call this public void. Okay, so the method that I'm going to be testing, come down into our util class, is get featured children. And this is just going to be normal operation. Okay. Another thing that I can do here is add a category to the test fixture. And the category allows me to filter the um, tests that I'm running when I run the test runner. Let's just give this a nice friendly name. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean if we compile here. We come back over into the test runner and I refresh that. And the test runner will actually go through and find all categories that you have in the solution. Okay, so now if I have multiple different categories in here, I can limit the uh, the number of tests that I'm running, so that I'm only running the smallest amount of tests I need to. Running the entire test suite for every single run um, is probably not the most efficient thing to do. We need to ensure that when our unit tests run, they don't affect any other part of the system or any other unit tests that may run before or after it. Um, the biggest contributing factor to this kind of thing, especially in a cycle system, is going to be your data and your content. Okay, so you don't want to have to rely on existing content in your system when you start your test, um, because it may not be there or it may be in a different format to what you expect. So with robust unit tests in Sitecore, we need to make sure that we're creating the content that we want each time we start our test, and then we destroy that content at the end. The reason we destroy it is we don't want that content leaking into other tests and potentially affecting the results of those. Okay, so any unit provides some places that we can place this kind of setup and tear down code. And the place that we're going to create our data is in our test fixture setup. Okay, and we have to attribute that method with the test fixture setup attribute. And we'll tear down our um, data in the test fixture tear down method. And again, we have to attribute that as well. Okay. So I need a few constants and um, member variables that I'm going to hold throughout the uh, duration of my test. The first of these would be the um, test root. So this is the item. If we flick back quickly to our content tree, our sample content tree, this would be the sample test tree item. Okay, that's what I'm going to call my test root item. Um, and the reason I want to hold on to that is so in my teardown method, I can destroy that single item and all the children will go with it. So back over here, I'm just going to create a member variable to hold that. 
I'm going to call this private item. Whoops, item. M test root. Okay, and we're going to initialize that here in the test fixture setup. Okay, so the way that we initialize this is we create that below the home item. So the home item, if we go back to our data here, is the perfect place to create this. So I'm just going to grab a reference to the home item here. So site core dot context dot database get item site core content home. Now one thing to note very quickly here, other than my spelling mistakes, um, is our context. Okay, keep in mind the context of where this piece of code is going to be running. Okay, I've already mentioned in the first video the test runner runs as part of your application. So when I'm hitting it through this URL, I'm actually in the context of the website. This is the public site, so I'm no longer inside the site called shell. Okay, so my context database is not the master database. In this context, it's actually the web database. Okay, and in reality, we don't care which database we're using as long as all the templates that we require are in there and the base structure, the skeleton structure that we're going to be bolting onto. Okay, as long as those things exist there, we don't really care which DB we're operating in. In fact, it's probably safer to be doing these kinds of tests inside the web DB because if we screw something up, it's very easy just to republish from the master to the web and we're back to a known good state. Now the next thing to do will be to grab a reference to the template that I want to use to create my test content from. So I'll say var template equals site core context database templates and the name of my template user defined article now something to note about these constants that I've got in here um, I shouldn't really be creating constants directly in the code I should be creating them inside a separate constants class this way I know that in other tests I'm referring to the same thing as I am in these tests so let's go off and create a new constants class. Okay, and now in here I can create um, structured inner classes to give my constants some structure and place these constants in there. So the first one is going to be my templates. So in here I've got constants um, public class templates. And in fact, I don't want to instantiate these, so I can make these static classes as well because realistically they're just lookups. Then inside here I could say public constant string and this is my article template. Now I'm not going to call it article template because of course we're inside the templates class. And I'll grab that string right there. Okay, so now I can refer to that by going constants.templates. Article. Okay, and every time I want to use the article template now, I can re refer to it from the constants class, and everything's going to be using the same thing. Um, I should probably also do the same thing in here. So I'm going to say in here constants dot paths dot home, and in here I'll create public static class paths. public constant string home is site core content home. Okay, much better. This is much more maintainable now. The next thing we can do is we can start we can add the, the test root. Now remember the context? Okay, we're running on side inside the website, not inside the shell here. So I'm going to have to run this code where I'm creating content inside a security disabler, otherwise I'm going to get an exception. So we're going to create a new security disabler. Now in here I can say the test root equals, whoops, not home, yes home, dot add, and we're going to call this test root. And the template I'll use is template right there. Okay. Now comes time to start adding the children. Now I could code all this up here, but it could be quite a bit of code going through creating the item, setting the fields. So I'm going to use a helper method in here 
I'm going to say add featured child. Okay. To this method, I'm going to pass the item that I want to create the the new child item below. I need to pass it a name, and I need to say whether it's featured or not. So should that field be ticked or unticked? So this one will say true. Okay. Let's come in here and terminate my stub. There we go. So in here now, now that first string was going to be the name. And that second bool there was going to be whether it was featured or not. So the first thing I need to do in there, of course, is grab a reference to that template. Now I probably should do some refactoring here and um, to minimize getting that template, but I'll leave that up to you. Next thing we can do is we can create the child itself. So child equals off that item that we're creating it below. We'll add a new item, give it the name name, we'll use the template template. Now we can put this into edit mode and we'll commit that edit down here as well. Okay, and now in here we can set the um, fields that we need to. Realistically, the only field that we're ch uh, setting here is whether it's featured or not, that checkbox. So I'll put in here checkbox field child.fields. Now, again, I should be using the constants class here. So I'm going to create a new inner class called fields. public constant string and this is the featured field whoops now in here I can say constants dot fields dot featured okay and I'll cast that to the checkbox field so now I can say featured sorry checked equals that variable that I'm passing in featured. Okay, all looking good. So up here I'll just complete the um, creation of my test content. So all these will have unique names. And I'll make three and four false. Okay. So let's just have a quick review. I'm grabbing the home item here. I'm grabbing the template that we, get, that we require for our test content. Inside the security disabler I'm going to create the test root item. And then I'm going to add some children below that. Um, out of the five children, two of those will not be featured. Okay. So to clean up the data that I've created in here, it's actually very simple. Again, do this inside a security disabler to make sure that we don't get exceptions thrown. And in here, all I need to do is say test root, delete. Okay. Let's just do a quick compile, make sure that's all working. Great. 